Hi, so in this video, we're going to take a look at how to use Microsoft Teams Speaker Coach to make sure you're presenting yourself the best you possibly can be whilst you're live in a meeting and also take a chance to have a review of that afterwards as well. I'm Gavin Jones, founder and director of MeTime, where we help people save time at work to do more of the things they love. If you're interested in working together, then stick around until the end to find out more or book a call using the link in the description below right now. Okay, so here we are in Teams and you can see that I'm looking at a speaker coach report from a real life meeting that I did the other day and the sorts of things that it's picking up on and sort of UI that you can see. I'm just gonna jump into how to turn it on first and then we'll come back to see how it's working. I've got new videos on Microsoft Teams, Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Viva coming out every Tuesday. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified every time one of those comes out. It's not something you can turn on in settings quite annoyingly. You have to be in a meeting to turn it on once you've turned it on and got a report, you can tick the button to say automatically start speaker coach in meetings, which if you like it, you can just leave it turned on and you never need to find this setting again. So as we've said in some previous videos, if you watch some of the ones, Microsoft seems to not like a channel meeting. So if you've got a channel meeting, you can't turn speaker coach on in there. I'm not sure if speaker coach works in channel meetings. Let me know in the comments below if it is working for you once you've turned it on and turned on automatically start. So you can't turn it on channel meeting. You can't turn it on in meet now. So you have to have a scheduled meeting, which I've got one that I made here. It doesn't need to be a real meeting. You can schedule a meeting in your calendar just to turn it on. See, mine's already turned on anyway. So it's saying speaker coach has started listening. It'll listen to you, analyze your speech and give you private feedback. I'll just show you how to turn it on if you haven't turned it on. Come into more at the time of recording because Microsoft likes to move the buttons around. Come to the three dots more language and speech and then turn, obviously mine says turn off, but you also say turn on speaker coach. It should be popping up telling you live things. So if it speaks, thinks you're speaking really fast or you're speaking in a monologue, it'll, it might pop up and say, you know, you're speaking too fast, try and slow down. See there, it says to you, try speaking a bit slower. Sometimes that can be a bit distracting. It is quite a nice little banner at the top of the meeting rather than like a big in your face thing. If you're in the middle of something important, you might find that distracting. You can always turn it off. However, it is trying to help you. So sometimes, you know, most of the calls I run are free consulting calls, discovery calls, whatever you want to call them, that you know, being able to slow down probably is of use. However, there is a bit that it was just like, that's just how I speak. So it's trying to, to force me to do something in unnatural, which probably isn't the best time to try and change something when you're in an important call. So most of the times it popping up live, at least in my experience, it's checking out the pace of what you're saying. When we come on to the, finish the meeting and look at the report, it's also picking up on like ums, ahs, you know, filler words. And I've not seen it say that live, but I get a lot of those. So the benefits of doing YouTube videos, I can edit myself and take most, if not all of the ums and ahs out. And obviously that isn't the, the tr case when I'm speaking live and naturally I do do lots of filler words, sort of, um, which um, which I've just done right now, is better if you can cut those out. I've not seen it prompt me on those live, but seeing it afterwards, just how many there are, is like a real you know wake up. And so speaker coach is invaluable for that, I think it is really useful. Without getting too political, I just want to show you something that I think is relatively absurd. So if I say, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce the speech, I get a live pop-up saying, ladies and gentlemen, might be offensive or non-inclusive. So there's a bit in the speaker coach that tells you if you're using non-inclusive speech, which is great. We want to be inclusive. We want to make sure everyone's included. I personally, without again getting too political, I don't think ladies and gentlemen is trying to be offensive to anybody. I just said it again. So, so obviously Microsoft thinks it's important enough to pop up live. There's some things that it doesn't pop up live. So like the ums and ahs and filler words, it doesn't prompt you to try and cut those out live, but it will tell you afterwards. So both the speed of your speech and doing a monologue, so it's saying remember to ask questions, maybe after speaking for an extended period so that you're not taking up all the, the limelight, but both the speed of your speech and inclusive language it thinks is important enough to pop up. Again, don't want to be too political. Let me know your views in the comments below. But as an example, if I'm speaking to my good friend, Chris, say in this example, and I say, Chris, you're a idiot. 
what the f are you talking about, you absolute <laughs> I would say that's less inclusive <laughs> than just saying ladies and gentlemen, which will probably pop up again now. It's goading me to tell me to stop saying ladies and gentlemen, which it keeps saying. But if I say you're an absolute I hate you. Your opinion does not matter. It has not pro got a problem with that. I can swear my head off. Can think of the worst derogatory words you can possibly think of. Also, as a quick aside, the higher up you are in an organisation, I would say the more likely it is you are to swear at each other. So in a board meeting, everyone seems to be swearing at each other in a lower down meeting, everyone's a bit more cordial. Um, maybe because of the stress levels are higher and the stakes higher, I'm not sure. But it is not bothered if I swear at somebody, but it is bothered if I say, ladies and gentlemen, which I think that's slightly absurd myself. So you can see as we've been going through, it's been popping up stuff. If we leave the meeting now, then we'll get an activity feed notification up there. And it's saying that we've got speaker coach report available. I don't know if you noticed, I didn't point it out, but when you start speaker coach and you're in a meeting, it does say, look, this is just for you only. It's not shared with anyone else. Although it's analyzing your speech, it's private to you. No one else can see your speaker coach reports. And so it says good work. Next time, try paying a bit more attention to your filler words and inclusiveness, time spent speaking, and you know, how many search suggestions you've got to review. So you can see filler words are a big one for me. This isn't unusual, even though I've only been speaking for five minutes, I've still got how many filler words have you got? So like, you know, uh, like I've got sort of in the past as well. And you can kind of go through each one and see what it's saying. So it says, looks like you use ladies and gentlemen, maybe use people. I think people sounds worse than, than that to me. And it didn't mention anything about my uh, potty mouth or swearing pace. It's saying slow down a bit and you can see like where in the meeting it's saying that you had that effect. You can't jump to see the meeting because speaker coach works even if you're not recording the meeting. And even if you are recording the meeting, it doesn't show you the bits where you were speaking. So you can't like, so go back and review it. Obviously you could go back and review it sort of manually, but like clicking on these pins doesn't jump you to see that particular bit of the meeting that it's talking about, even if you had recorded it. Intonation is a good one. So it's saying, you know, don't be too flat, increase your you know pitch and variability. Um, and monologue, so it's watching out that you don't hog the whole meeting and don't let other people speak. So obviously that's all great repetitive language. We didn't have anything in this particular meeting to go and look at, but obviously the entire thing was monologue because there's no one else in the meeting and we were just doing it to record this video. So the whole thing should have been a monologue. I only thought we were doing a monologue sort of four minutes in, which is funny. And yeah, I think it's really useful. Obviously it's tailored by people that think you should speak in a certain way that we've obviously seen through some of the inclusivity things and you know how much should you speak versus someone else I guess it's sort of based on your personality so I'm not sure we should potentially believe everything that it says but it is really useful to reflect and see if you can present a bit better and I think it's better than having it because the other option is PowerPoint speaker coach that's when you're presenting PowerPoint live and it's doing pretty much the same thing. This you can turn on for every meeting. So whether you're presenting or not, or just a participant, and if you are presenting, then speaker coach is still gonna work when you're presenting slides. And so I think it's really useful. I think it's worth just turning on and leaving on, but let me know what you think in the comments below about this feature. Are you gonna turn it on? Do you like it? What do you think about some of the oddities of not picking up swearing? Let me know in the comments below. If you need more help making your whole organization work in a more modern way and be more productive, then book a call using the link in the description below. If you just like these videos and you want them to keep coming out, then it would really help if you supported the channel in some way. We've got numerous ways of doing that now in the description below. There's a big section for that. But the main thing you can do is give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. It really does help us in the algorithm. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.